Your name's not Dan, you're not coming in. Hey there, just a quick message ahead of this episode to say we hope you like the rebrand, which includes a new website, rawuk.com, that's the URL. On there you can listen to and watch all our previous content. You can get extra content. You can also buy our first ever Raw merchandise and even sign up to become a Raw member, which will keep us going and keep you at the heart of this exciting journey, earning perks in return. We need your support, so please do check us out at rawuk.com and remember to like, comment and subscribe to everything we do on all our channels. And of course, make sure you tell all your pals. But most of all, enjoy this latest episode. Cheers. So uh, we're going to bring you up to date with our guest today, Stu Allen, as we head towards the end of this episode. He's still uh, with us here. Hello, Stu. How are you? You good, mate? Oh, oh, oh. still here. You're still there. Good to be enjoy that. Oh, right. um, so you left radio, uh, Piccadilly Radio and Key 103 in 1999. What mm. was it? Why did you move on? Was it the ratings died? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> no, um, just radio it just got steadily less and less um, uh, fun. Interesting, yeah. Fun is a, is the perfect word. Um, it's just run by you know, as years went on, by run by people who don't give a crap about music or um, or anything really like that. They just want to you know sell advertising. They get. Their presenters to talk about an on-air promotion, and yeah, that's all it is. They're not. Uh, you could have the biggest ratings, but if you haven't got um, a sponsor, then they'll get rid of that and make put something with less ratings with a sponsor. And it, it's just you know soul destroying, really. I thought, well, I've done fourteen years there at the time. It got to the end of well, it got to the year two. I thought, right, I'll do right up to the end of nineteen ninety nine. As soon as 2000 came in, I was out. You know, I just thought, it's enough. It's a massive shame. And obviously, there was a bit of an uproar from the public with their letters and things. Right. But, you know, it was a shame. But, you know, I thought, okay, it's time to move on. There was, because I like radio a lot. I mean, it's radio is brilliant. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just a brilliant way of communicating and everything. I don't think everything has to be. You know, YouTube's and whatever. It doesn't, you know, hey. obviously it's a bit. Hey. <laughs> but for, for this, <laughs> uh, it's probably best, apart from my side, of course. But, um, but yeah, you know, it, it, I think, you know, radio is a great thing. You just click it on, you know, um, listen and have, you know, all this music going and all the rest of it. You don't have to see things, you know, with it, when you're doing music. It wasn't the end of your uh, radio career, which we'll we'll come on to next. But no, no I did lots of it. But from one radio presenter to another radio presenter, don't you find it such a shame that there is no independent style radio anymore? Really, of any note, yeah. it's all it's all Awful. sort of big conglomerates, yeah. the capitalist conglomerates that you right. They only care about sponsorship. They only care about mm -hmm. money. And really, it's all so utterly banal. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you look at the people who've come through radio, and you know, I include yourself, but even in the speech radio, you people like Chris Morris's, Danny Baker, mm -hmm. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, the do you agree that? the radio landscape is not set up for these people to come through. You know, they might not be that good looking. They might not be, you know, but they are brilliant, yeah. brilliant broadcasters. And and we don't get that anymore because they're just so safe. No, exactly. There's no, you know, there's no ideal personality on the, you know, that's what was good about, you know, like a, a local radio station like Piccadilly used to be. Um, you, you would look forward to, somewhat a certain presenter's show because you liked him you know uh and and he's oh yeah he plays some good good album tracks or something or other you know what i mean um, and this was during the day you know that, that people just got so um you know interested in radio they're not like now it's i you couldn't it could be anybody on there now they, they, they're paying a lot of money for certain personalities you know on a breakfast show or whatever but they're just talking the same bollocks as the next, the next show or what the other radio stations say, you know. And music is just nothing. It's just in the background. You know, it's just not even thought of properly whatsoever. So what's, what's like your favourite biscuit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, here's all the other player song. I don't even tell you who it is. And why would they anyway? It's only the same five songs all day. So, but I like music. 
So it's no point in me being on the ra on a radio station where I can't play or do what I want to do on in my show. You know, I mean, I produce shows that are you know not just thrown together. And I, you know what I mean? I just, I, I'm just too. I just love music too much to uh, piss about with a radio station that just doesn't appreciate you being there, really. So. Well, one door shut with Key 103, uh, but another door opened and you landed a gig at Kiss FM, another radio station, which was fantastic once upon a time and is now mm. not all that fantastic now, uh, very much in, in the same I vein of all the, of all the other radio stations that, we, you know, that we've just sort of alluded to. But you mixed the famous Kiss Mix during 99 and 2000. Mm. How did that come about? Because that must have been a real boon for you. Well, kind of. It was um, it was all fairly commercial again, but they needed like a, a sort of half hour mix thing around drive time, you know, time. Um, and they wanted it, you know, sort of mixed well, if you see what I mean. It wasn't just like track, track, track after the other. And um, so they, they said, yeah, could you do it? I went, right, okay. So obviously it was all done in my little studio. And... Um, yeah, that became the Kiss Mix. That's how it started. And it actually had more people listening of the age that they wanted of that time, you know, the, ever before. So they had X amount of mixes and it kept going for a while. It kept going for a while, but I don't know. But did yeah, it, I was quite happy with did that. It open, did it open any? I'm, I'm not surprised. No, not whatsoever. It didn't open any doors down south. No, no. I don't think they wanted uh, DJ Kiss Mix, you know, because uh, it wasn't. It wasn't built, it might have been mentioned that it was mixed by me or whatever, I don't know, but it was just another little job, radio job bit, you know, really. So, yeah, it wasn't D DJ Kuzmix. Around about the same time, numbers dwindled at Hardcore Raves, didn't they? And, I, and in fact, that was when I got into it, which is a weird time to have got into it because, um, I mean, to be honest, I, it was a there were points that I was at raves and I was like, they've almost put this room on just for me. Um, but that wasn't a bad thing. You know, I quite like, I like the atmosphere. I like the people, you know, yeah. but it, but the numbers were poor and you would have seen that happening. And I know that you drifted away from hardcore, but was that, what was it like? You know, did you play to any really dead events in sort of basement rooms? Cause it was just hardcore, yeah. absolutely on its knees. Yeah. We all have really all, all as DJs, but, um, but yeah, it, I wasn't, yeah, I, I mean, I, obviously I wasn't, my love for hardcore was still there. It was just not much of the new stuff anymore. So I, if I was booked, I would say I can play, you know, a good old classic set, you know, and they go, oh, yeah, great. So that's what happened. Um, so I wasn't playing any newer things until 2005 or something. But yeah. yeah. So you, you mentioned that. What was it about the 2005 change? And it was UK, it was called UK Hardcore. Uh, yeah. At, at this point. What was it about that sound that you thought, no, nah, no, nah, I'm into this now again? Yeah. It had a nice um, sound. It, just production wise, it was just that bit meatier. Synths were done better. <laughs> um, they had some you know, like good vocals in there, you know, it's just, a, it was the next progression. And I really liked what I was hearing, you know, some sound, you know, really clever bits, you know, of, uh, in, you know, um, engineering wise, you know, people like Gamma and people were coming along on mm. new then and, and uh, some great techniques, you know, and that made, oh, you know, it's fre it's getting fresh again. And that's what I liked, you know. And looking back sort of 15, 20 years on, how did you find the UK happy hardcore scene? And I'm asking this because there's been quite a lot of well-documented difficulties that have come out between some of the main players in the scene, a lot of bickering, arguing, certain DJs and MCs was published in, in, you know, in, in public. Hmm. Did it affect you at all? Did you ever run into any issues? And how did you view all that stuff? Oh, I, I don't normally say much notice of stuff like that to be quite honest but um and it certainly has affected me if um but anybody hasn't within the business well not to my face uh, <laughs> slag me off i don't know oh you um, should hear what they're all they're all they're, you should hear what they're all saying about you Stu. oh sorry, i can imagine I can sorry mate imagine. <laughs> <laughs> i'm only joking they all say you're lovely carry on <laughs> yeah i just i i don't like i say any silly bickering -y business that goes on i just like i say I'll just stay well clear. I've got, you know, too much. How, do, how, have, how, have, you, how have you done that? Well, 
by doing other things only you know if i was purely a hardcore dj and the only way i can you know all i ever do is i'll call this i'll call that then i suppose my news feed would be all about hardcore wouldn't it but you know if i just see somebody being stupid somewhere i'll just go well, I'll move on to something, someone who isn't being so stupid then. You know, I, I can't be arsed, you know, it's just, come on. <laughs> so, Stu, you now um, whole, uh, host Old School Nation. You used to do it on Unity and now do it um, on its own radio show. And you you, mm. you you really enjoy it. I know for the last year, you, you put so much effort into it. I mean, it's quite clear how much effort you put into this. But I suppose that's in keeping with with a lot of your, uh, your whole career, really, you know, being oh, very professional. Ethic um how, how much do you how much do you enjoy that process of putting things together and ultimately most importantly playing what you want which you wouldn't be able to do on a normal radio station no it's uh, really important um so yeah it's just my ethic is to you know especially like a radio show and people you know are good enough to tune in they, they should get a radio show that sounds good you know what i mean it, it, well you know don't um, you know, thrash things all over the piece. Although there are people who like those as well. But, yeah. but no, for, for me personally, you just make it just sound as good as you know as it should be. Just because it's on OSN Radio that we're on, we are an online station. Um, it should sound as professional as someone you know. I don't know BBC Six or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So yeah, things should sound uh, some sound as good as possible. So yeah, I love putting loads of effort in. Yeah. How popular are they? Oh God, the the Friday show is is hugely you know popular. Um, and then when I'm doing other stuff, you know, I'm really happy to say that, that you know people like listening to them as well. But I, I always vary it. There's so, it's it's called Old School Nation, and I just have it. Yeah, it's just have little rules. So well, anything before '97. Um, there's no happy hardcore in that show because I'll play it somewhere else, and it, it just goes on like that. Just any any proper old school um, of all different styles. I'll get all the I'll get the listeners to to uh, to request stuff during the week and if, pick out decent stuff and then play them on a the Friday. Well, regarding that, um, there must be a specific track that's requested more than others. What is that track? Uh, a lot of them like things like. Brothers and Sisters, which, which in its own right is a good tune. But it's been a little bit overplayed. But there's another rule for the requested bits. That was, uh, anything that's requested within three months, uh, you know, doesn't get played. So nothing, you know, otherwise you'd have a, a radio show with the same bleeding tunes, wouldn't you? So... And then, you know, come on, all those tracks you could choose, you know, before 97, anything, you know, that uh, there's quite a few to choose from. So, okay. yeah. Well, Ed, Ed Stringer on Instagram asks, if you had a one-hour slot to play, whatever you really wanted, what style would it be? And from what year in the 90s rave scene would the tracks be from? That's a good question, that. A very good question. Um, I think... To play uh, a whole hour like that and stick to the year, probably 92 would please a lot of people as well, you know, because that was the year so much stuff came out. You know, we had, I love 91 has its own sound as well because I played plenty of that on the, on the Friday show. And you can hear these bass lines and beats coming in that weren't there the previous year, if you know what I mean? But then by 92, it just progressed that little bit more with extra bass and whatever else. Great creativity as well. People like DJ Seduction and whatever, they were coming out making these great tunes and, you know, he'd, he'd send me one of his 12 inch, you know, tracks every sort of three weeks or something, you know, he was absolutely hammering them out that year. So, yeah, I'd say 92 would be the best. Um, classics came from that, you know, Edge number one and, you know, even SL2 stuff and whatever. Yeah, they're a real massive tunes. 
Okay. Uh, that's a great question. Thank you very much for that question, Ed Stringer. If you want to get in touch with us at all to ask us any questions, you can go to Instagram like Ed did, or you can go to Twitter, you can go to Facebook, and uh, or you can email us as well. Hello at the 90s ravepodcast.co.uk. And if you can give us any money at all, even a little bit, it will help. GoFundMe.com forward slash the 90s rave podcast. <laughs> We really hope you're enjoying yet another one of Raw's in-depth interviews about the rave scene, which we are proud to say are now all curated into the British Library Sound Archive. All of us here at Raw HQ love how much you love what we do, and your generous one-off donations have been a huge help in covering our initial costs. But we're now a team of five, putting in a combined 80 hours a week for no wages, with big plans to expand further, and so our costs are going up. As such, we could really use your help to keep Raw growing and developing, as you've seen us do since our launch in July 2020. First up, go and check out our brand new website. It's rawuk.com, where you can find loads of cool extra content, and you can grab Raw's first ever range of merchandise. That's rawuk.com for our new flashy website. We've also launched a new membership scheme where you can support us financially to create more content on an ongoing basis for less than the price of an oat milk cappuccino. Plus, you get great perks in return. Head to patreon.com forward slash raw UK pods. That's patreon.com forward slash raw UK pods to see exactly what's on offer. You can also join our YouTube membership, which is basically the same. Uh, or if you're not asked about a membership, but you'd like to support us with a few quid as a one-off or a repeat donation, then head to our website and click the PayPal link. A reminder of that new website URL yet again, rawuk.com. Big love and respect to you all. Please keep supporting us. Hope you enjoyed the rest of the app. Right, let's uh, finish up with a few final questions because I'm interested to know, Stu, obviously, you know, you, you are a, a man who makes who would have made... M- a significant portion of his income by playing out. And uh, unfortunately, in the past year, that just hasn't been possible. Um, cool. We saw you, in fact, uh, on a short segment on BBC Breakfast recently. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you explain? You were talking about this very thing. Can you explain to us how tough the last year has been for you with, with no gigs? Yeah. Um, tough as uh, regards, yeah, sort of no income. <laughs> Not anything, um, you know, in that way. Um but um, it's kind of it's, it's it's weird. It puts things into perspective a little bit. Sometimes you know you can sit back and think about things a bit more than you would normally. But I threw myself into doing more um, as soon as we were told back in March of last year um, that we were going to go into an official lockdown. The day after, I started doing. I thought, right, I'll do some shows in the daytime. Uh, on OSN radio to do uh, for, call it just lockdown shows and playing whatever you know, absolutely I call them random random lockdown shows and yeah just playing whatever comes up if it's good just get it played all different styles whatever and I didn't realise but it, it went on and on and on and on and I did they're all up on my mix cloud as well um, and they're all different styles and playing one day. Uh, we started doing, uh, you know, even some disc, a whole day, you know, show of disco and 70s functions and then 92 breakbeats, trance, you know, pure trance, uh, old school piano. And it just went on and on and on like this. And, uh, yeah, it just, every day. And I just threw myself into that. And that, I, I still get that, all lots of reaction now to say what a saviour, you know, a saviour that was for them. You know the listeners to have that. The weather was brilliant as well uh, uh, this time last year. You know during the lockdown, so they're all out in the gardens with the lockdown show going. You know it was just amazing. Um, so yeah, I was that helped me as well. You know without realising it, it was a hell of a lot of work. I know it didn't sound a lot just doing two or three hours in the day, but it was it was a bit more than that. Sorting out the tunes, um, making sure you know I had all good stuff ready to play. Get it all recorded properly. Get it on mixed cloud, ready as soon as possible. Because there was another show the following day, you know. So yeah, that was very, very uh, time consuming. But I, I really loved that. I really yeah. loved it, and it was uh, it kept me, you know, I think motivated, you know, as well, and kept me in, you know, again, music, you know. So yeah, it was, it was good. I, I imagine uh, it can't come close to the buzz of actually playing out. How much do you miss that? Oh, so much, so much. Um, yeah, all that time, 
of not playing live in you know to any form of crowd and it was great in october of last year we were we did manage to fly out to cabos where unity and the sun did a, a a small it would have been a big rave holiday but due to the circumstances they only had i think it was like 200 people out there but each day and in the evening even though there was restrictions you know you weren't allowed to jump all over the place and dance at night time and whatever but you could go to a bar with your mask and whatever and then you could you were allowed to be on a beach so we had the decks everything was all set up properly you know but people just oh you know and, and a boat as well we did a couple of boat parties you know all the official stuff and um that was you know i'm going i'm playing to a crowd again oh you know seeing people in front of you dancing you know it's just absolutely amazing and everybody were there was so grateful as well as you would be you know well, of course as a man who spent close to 40 years honing your craft i'm sorry if that makes you feel old Stu. um how <laughs> did you feel when the government urged people from the arts industries to retrain oh that was uh yeah well you could expect that from this government don't you really i'm not being funny but you <laughs> <laughs> what do they know? What do they know? You know what I mean? No, that was, um, yeah, like a kick in the teeth, wasn't it? You know, you, you just, you just, I don't know, nothing shocks me about this government anymore. You know, the way they, the way they've handled the whole pandemic, they've done every, everything wrong, you know. Um, so, yeah, that, that didn't shock me, uh, but it made me very angry at the same time, you know. So I'm thinking, what would we retrain as, you know, a van drive? What would you, what would you retrain as, Stu? That's a good well, no, question was, for every I, know, I, was, I was just thinking that. Um, so, I don't know, because <laughs> I, I, I have thought about it, and I think, well, if it, you know, it's that old music thing again. If it's nothing to do with music, it's, it's all I know. So, you know, if, if you take that away, I'm thinking, well, I'm a bit stuck. I can, I can cook quite well, but there's no restaurants open, so I'm bollocks there, aren't I, really? Uh, I don't know what. <laughs> no idea. Uh, what do you think, or how do you think the rave scene will look when we come out the other side of the pandemic? I mean, there's lots of events popping up. Whether they're going to happen and no. whether they're going to happen in the way they're meant to happen yeah. is another yeah. matter. But what, what what do you think? Well, well, I know that these events are popping up and they're selling and they're and they're and they're, and they're selling out. But you know, pe other people I speak to, promoters, are like there's going to be a lot of promoters getting burned because people are oh, just buying God. tickets, but they're not yeah. necessarily, there's going to be a lot of empty raves because people won't go. Well, yeah, I think, I think people who obviously bought the tickets will go, but, um, but it's almost like, um, whether they're allowed, you know, will we, we, will we be allowed? We just got to wait and see, you know, it's a bit like booking a holiday, you know, all these companies want you to book the holiday, but, there's no guarantee, you know, that you'll get the holiday. So it's it's a real tough one, and I'm just praying and praying and praying that you know, come on, you know, it, we've we've been out this long enough now. Um, it can be done. There must be certain guidelines, maybe we have to follow, just so long as we can put this thing on. But you know, they did say that after after June, we should be okay. But I've, I've had me jab anyway. Good man. Uh, oh, well, man Stu, Stu Allen will be there. If, uh, if I'll be there with me, John. He's at it. Um, in terms of the music, can I ask everybody this? Because you know, and you're a producer as well, so you will have an idea of, uh, about Pratt. Well, ideally, hopefully, you'll have an idea about this. Um, do you expect an evolution from the rave scene in terms of its music from where we left off? Uh, you know, are there any genres that you expect to kick off in a big way? Are there going to be any changes to the music? Because it's an interesting thing, right? So, you know, Force and Styles, we interviewed mm. uh, them and Darren was like, I can't release something that I was working on last May or I was playing out last May. I can't play that again. I have to do something else. But the yeah. problem is I don't know what it is. And actually, I don't know if it's going to be successful. So I'm sort of stabbing in the dark. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, I've absolutely no idea um, which direction any scene's going to go, to be honest. I'll, I'll, you know, I always like to listen to new things, um, even if I don't DJ them or play them even on the radio, but I like to hear different stuff that is very new. Um, there's a lot of housey things that seem to be going along, but 
No, I, I wouldn't say they're huge progressions. They, they're good tunes, but I, I don't see any kind of movement going on or groundbreaking things. They're just good, you know, or a certain remixer of House comes along and, you know, a bit of a flavour of the month, but does a great job, but not really changing anything, but just makes good versions of things. Um, now, whether that's a massive move forward or I, I'm not sure it is to be honest but I've not heard anything groundbreaking enough to go whoa this is you know this could be the next thing that's unfortunately interesting. that's interesting um Carlo on Twitter asks what's the biggest change in dance music that you've noticed in the past 30 years um it's change you know they've all been relatively um you know sort of progressive aren't they you know there's this sort of got that just morphs into that but the biggest change would be <laughs> probably uh, as a different thing is we probably dubstep you know what i mean how what a change that was compared to other things going on do you know what i mean not that uh i can play too much of that to be quite honest but why not yeah. why not why not not your sort of thing no i don't, I don't mind hearing some of it uh after a while though i think no oh, that's enough of that but um no, there's, I don't. My audience would not go for that, and you know, and I can see why not. Uh, one final question from our audience is from Kevin Nugent in Perth, in Western Australia. We've got fans all across the globe, Stu, like I'm sure you do as well. Um, <laughs> he says we've had big name DJs come to Perth in Australia. You're one of the few that never came, and we're worse for it. Why? Well, nice of you to say that, but um, only for the fact that someone hasn't booked me, really. <laughs> It's that's what it's always down to. <laughs> <laughs> but I have had I have had requests for, for Australia a few times. Um and they were in the days of having a regular radio show and it was very difficult. And also uh at the time of doing a million gigs as well, you know, back in the nineties and stuff. And that was hard, you know, obviously once you've committed to all those over months and months, um, then yeah. But uh if, if you know someone in Perth um, who wants a vaccinated DJ, uh, do let me know. And also, they've got to open the borders, and you've got to be allowed to travel from the UK. I mean, you there are probably, because it, well, it's, it's a work reason, you probably are allowed to do that, but there's quite well, a lot yeah. of things that have got to happen there oh, to get you out to Perth. It's going to take a while, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, worth a try. Yeah, of course. Well, look, it, you never, it might happen one day. Um, <laughs> and... Um, before we end, is there any way that our audience can support you during lockdown? What can they do? Um, I just uh, look out for OSN Radio, you know, a lot. And to, um, that'd be great, you know, if you want to tune into that more often and see when I'm on. Uh, just you can get all the details of that on my Facebook, obviously. Um, so it's for me, it's A W L A N, so you get the right Stu Allen. And um, I'm on Twitter as well, I'm, I'm on Twitter. I so think now everybody now that. has to deliberately misspell your name. I think that's yeah, the, I think it's the, like that's what you've done here now. You've basically made everyone going to go all going to annoy. They know it really annoys you, and they're <laughs> going to do it. Um, and uh, and do you have a message, perhaps, for our listeners in terms of some life advice to help them get through what's been a, a pretty tricky side, a tricky, pretty tricky Ooh. time? And and you yourself have seen to have weathered it. Yeah, I, I, phew, I couldn't. I don't. I'm qualified to give you uh, too much advice as such, but. Um, I don't know. Music is again, yeah, it might sound cliche or whatever, but music always helps. It has an amazing amount of powers. Um, you know, you, you listen and be involved. And the, the power of music, it really is incredible and, uh, and does have a lot of good answers for you as well. You know, the just putting on the, the right track or just search around for different styles that you might not have thought you like um try that and just see how that sort of helps you know to heal or if you're troubled or whatever you know that might might sort of do the trick as well but you know but always try and be in touch with other people as well you know do, on facebook and stuff um you know who are in the same sort of little group of you know musical uh, sort of fans sort of thing so, well, the, the, the reason I think why, well, one of the reasons why I think this podcast has done quite well was was because of those reasons that you say you, mm. you know, music is it's it's a unifying force. It brings people uh, 
you know, nice feelings, nice memories. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed a, I have, but I am a mere podcaster. Um, have you noticed a, a sort of reignition in the love of your audience for some of those 90s sounds? Um, definitely. They want um, just stuff that's, you know, especially during these times and the lockdown times, you know, especially the original lockdown, they just wanted things that made them feel good, you know, don't, don't sort of work the mind too much, just play, you know, just hear, um, just feel good music. It's what I kind of do at the moment. I'm doing a, a Monday and a Thursday, uh, sorry, Tuesday and a Thursday lockdown show on OSN. And on, on the Monday, it is just, as feel good as possible. Lots of new stuff you might never have heard before, but they always have that feel good thing in there. Um, so if you want to check that out, you know, it, it, lots of that's the that's the feedback I'm getting. Going, oh my god, this is just just what I needed today. You know, and that, it's amazing. Even if only five people, you know, that have helped in that way, you know, a bit more than that are tuned in. But you know that, but it's nice that they feel the need to tell you that, and that you know means everything. It really does. Nice. Uh, Stu, you're a gentleman and a scholar, a sage. We've thoroughly enjoyed your company and thank you so much for your time. And uh, anyone who. No, no, no. Honestly, the pleasure is all ours. And uh, you're, you're, you're an absolute legend, man, like a legend of the scene. So it's great to have you on the, on the podcast, telling a slightly different story as well from a different part of the world. Uh, and if anyone wants to join Stu, you must have the world's biggest record collection, by the way. <laughs> um, it's pretty big, yeah. Um, <laughs> is, it all on all... is it all on vinyl? Well, there is the vinyl is the biggest collection bit, yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's all on files most of the time now, which uh, you know thousands which, and thousands on a little thing like that, you know, which crazy. Your, your wife is probably delighted by. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> got the house back. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, mate, thank you so much, and everyone should go and check out your old school nation tunes on the internet because you'll get here. Wonderful range of music, not just hardcore, all sorts of stuff, not even just Everything. rave. Everything. Stu, you're a legend, and I hope we Thank see you, you out again on the street. Oh, not on the street. <laughs> That's something different. I hope you see Thank you. you. <laughs> I'll end it there. See you later, Stu. <laughs> Cheers. Well, that's it for another episode of Raw. And if you like what you've heard, we'd love you to get involved. All of us here at Raw HQ buzz hard off how much you, the Raw crew, enjoy our work and your generous cash donations have been a huge help since our launch. But we're now a team of five, putting in combined 80 hours a week for no wages. We've got loads of plans to go further, expand our team and offer, but that does mean that our costs are also increasing. So we could really use your help to keep Raw growing and developing as you've done since we started. So please do check out our website initially. It's rawuk.com for interesting extra content and to get your hands on our first ever range of raw merchandise. That's rawuk.com. We've also launched a new membership scheme where you can donate to create more interesting and fun content on an ongoing basis and you'll even get stuff in return. So head to patreon.com forward slash rawukpods. That's patreon.com forward slash rawukpods to see what's on offer. You can also join our YouTube membership, which is the same. Or if you're not bothered about membership, but you'd like to support us with a few quid as a one-off or repeat donation, head to our website and click the PayPal link. That website URL, one more time, rawuk.com. Respect to you for your support and for getting to the end of this episode. Please keep supporting us and help ensure there's more quality content coming your way on a regular basis. Oi, oi. Raw, raw, raw.